So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and we're going to cut these sausages in half. The ingredients start out raw, just like these young men's stories. I was sexually abused. Uh, when I was seven. Uh, honestly, I'd so probably be homeless or dead at this point. And in the end, they come together, just like these men here at Nick's Place, a recovery home for young men struggling with addiction, to create something nourishing, something healing, something that will set them on their way. Um, I have a family member who's gone through some of the same things these guys have gone through. You feel stronger with it? Oh, yeah. I just want to be a part of the community and kind of help out. That's local star chef Adam Greenberg. He's been on the Food Network. So has D.C. chef Alex McCoy. They're teaching these young men an important life skill, how to cook. These guys are really inspiring. I mean, just to be able to be here and, and see what these guys are doing and the courage that they have to, like, work their way through this. And, uh, you know, I've got some friends and family that have gone through this, and it's, it's really hard. Tonight is more than about the meal. It's about these chefs showing simply they care about people they've just met. Extra sweet and spicy lemonade. Sweet and spicy. I'm making a, a cassoulet. It was one of the first dishes that I learned how to cook when I started out. I really appreciate them coming and doing this for us. That's perfect. See that? It took 30 seconds. <laughs> it's helping me get back into society. Our guys every single day demonstrate that recovery is possible. Rhea McVicker started this place. <laughs> There's a little bit of healing in this for you. My son Nick uh, was 22 years old when he died of this disease, and that was 20 years ago. Rhea says Nick fought hard. He went to rehab. She remembers this, his last visit. And when I asked him how it was, he said, it's OK, but there's no one here my age. So she created a place for men 20 to 26 years old. The rules are strict. The guys have chores. She helps them get jobs. They have to be to dinner on time, 5.30. Bless this food. Thank you for this wonderful night. Tonight is special, not just because of the chefs and the cameras. Men who have graduated and stayed sober came back to share their inspiration. Addiction kind of robs you of your soul, like, you know, being isolated and cut off from the world and loved ones. So this is just an opportunity for like-minded guys to get around the table and just be real with each other and be honest and open and not like revert back to, you know, what got them in their addiction in the first place. Real, honest, and open, the most important ingredients for recovery here. DeMalo says he's been addicted to marijuana since he was 15. Tonight marks his fourth month at Nick's place. The DeMalo that came here the first day was really self-centered and really didn't know what direction he was going in. Uh, I still have a court date that I'm about to face pretty soon, but I had no hope and really wanted to give up on life. And tonight, he may have found his calling. He's talking to Adam about becoming a chef. I'll give you the job, you just gotta keep it. That's what this place is about, a new start. It's kind of giving me a new shot to make up for past mistakes, kind of um, start to rebuild relationships and kind of start on a journey of the life that I feel like I was supposed to live. None of this is easy. Matt is 22. He says he just got real with what led him to use in the first place. When I was younger, I had, um, I was sexually abused at, when I was seven. I grew up with ADD and depression, like that was just in my genes and I didn't know how to deal with that. I was always a misfit and an outcast. Throughout the years of just progressively using, um, I carried my friend's caskets, I've overdosed three times. Uh, some miracle kept me here and I serve a purpose. Like people just like look at you and they're like, just stop, like just put it down. And like, it's not, you're, it's not that easy. You can't just put down something that you've been doing to cope with things that have happened in your past that you can't open up about. The conversations can be heavy, but also they can be light. <laughs> <laughs> it helps these guys bond in just a few short months. Their family. <laughs> I found that the guys that I'm with right now, who are convicts, felons, um, are some of the most amazing people in the world. And the things that they've done in their past doesn't dictate 
anything in their future at all. Being that young and being able to address your problems and open up about it, there's people that are 50 years old that can't open up about that stuff. And it, it's, it sucks that, you know, people put us down all the time, but that's what makes us fighters, warriors. What do you think Nick would think of this place? Well, Nick would say, I can't believe my freaking mother. <laughs> He, but he would also say, I'm really not surprised, yeah. you know, but Nick would say to me during his addiction, he would say, why don't you just give up, Mom? Why don't you just give up? And I'd say, mm -mm. as long as you're breathing, I'm not giving up. And she's not letting these guys give up either, no matter how tough it gets. Through my using, I just, I ruined absolutely everything. I have no money, no car. Uh, I had I had no phone when I came in here. I had no job. Uh, I was homeless before I went into treatment, and now I have the opportunity to literally start over, make myself who I wanted to be my entire life.